Hey class, this is Nick. Uh, I just got a quick tutorial for you today that's a supplement to our uh, post-rendering um, lessons this week. So what I mean by post-rendering is that uh, a lot of times renderings don't come out you know, perfect right out of the rendering engine, whether that's Rhinoceros or whether that's Maxwell or V-Ray or something. The most powerful rendering tool that you have is Photoshop, right? Um, and we've been having some issues with our Maxwell licenses, and sometimes you just don't have access to the same tools. Uh, but you always have access to Rhinoceros. Uh, and so uh, what I want to talk to you guys about, just really briefly, is um, how to get some um, simple renderings out of uh, out of Rhino uh, using the built-in tools. The things you're going to get out of Rhino, you know, are not going to have um, as sophisticated um, you know, like lighting. It's not going to be physically accurate. Um, but it's pretty good for a lot of things, especially if you just want something quick that you want to sketch over or you want to take into Photoshop and um, make a quick uh, post-processed render. So what I'm going to go ahead, I, starting with the model that I gave you guys, if you open up Rhino, you can go into the uh, render tools bar and uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with lights. I'm not really going to talk about those in terms of setting up your own lights. I'm really going to just talk about the sun system. A lot of the things we're going to be doing right now have to do with exteriors, um, and we want to look at the effect of sunlight on our interiors. So the sun uh, makes sense. If, if you click on the little uh, sun uh, icon here, you get the sun system. And uh, I'm in uh, rendered view mode. Well, I am now. Okay. And I'm going to say on, and then you see instantly I get the effects of it. Um, so the sun, you can turn the sun on and on, on and off. You can see that the presence of the sun makes uh, shadows. Let me get a regular. Uh, camera here, so we can look at this. We're gonna get shadows from the sun, and then we're gonna get kind of a like a sun kind of color, and that comes from the kind of sunlight, uh, which was something that we can we can actually adjust if we need to. But you can see that like as you go further in the day, right, it gets more white, and then it gets kind of more yellow and red, you know, towards the sunset here. Um, you can see that we can we can set like the year, we can set like the time of year. I'm gonna set it to now. Um, set my location somewhere. Can I find it? I don't know. Wow, can Matt, can Rhino find where I am? Oh, I can. Amazing. Okay, so we're in Des Moines. Oops, and it is yeah. Okay, so that's not too bad. One o'clock some pretty decent sun. I'm going to move it a little bit. So now you see, now a couple things you see here, the kind of fuzzy shadows that are not really looking too great. Um, we can fix that by going into properties. And your settings may vary. If you have a school computer, you'll probably have a lot of the same um, settings that I have, but your own personal computer might not. And it has a lot to do with your graphics card. So I'm going to go ahead and turn up the graphics card into aliasing. Mip map to nearest and filtering to high. If you have a good if you have a good card, you can handle this. I'm also going to throw on compression. Um, and then I'm going to go into the render display mode, and I'm going to change my settings to um, help view some of these things here. So I'm going to use make sure that you're on scene lighting. That's going to use the sun system. If you're not, you're not going to get a sun. Use advanced lighting, okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and go into shadows, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna max out the video memory. You can see already the amount of detail that increases. Shadows kind of stick to things, right? The more memory you have, and then I'm gonna go ahead. And this one, um, you got to be a little bit careful with because it can really look kind of strange. Um, I would just soften up the edges like slightly. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't blur it too much either. And then go ahead and crisp up some of the shadows. So just um, kind of playing with some of these settings to increase some of the clarity of what you're seeing. This is not what we're going to be rendering with, but I think it, I think it helps to um, to have these things, especially um, increasing the um, the sharper shadows. I think it's gonna it's gonna give your preview a lot more accuracy. This is kind of doing some weird stuff because um, it's just really close to another object. And so don't, don't worry about that. It doesn't actually hurt the rendering. Um, okay, so you know, playing with those settings, we have our location. Um, you can also try on skylight. 
And skylight is the kind of extra ambient light that you get from bouncing rays. It's a simulation of what you get in Maxwell. And you can see that in the kind of ambient occlusion that happens like at the, at the edges of things. And again, this is kind of just in the rendering. Uh, sorry, in the uh, rendered view. And I, I probably should turn that on before I play with my settings. But you can see... You can see the effects of some of these settings, you know, on that. Again, I'm only really concerned here about the kind of preview that I have. This is not going to affect the final rendering. And uh, let's see if I can dock my son here. Um, if I go in and I go to, and in order to get to the Rhino render, remember you go to current render and just go back to Rhino, take it off of Maxwell. Um, let's go ahead and see what the rendering preview looks like. You can see the way that this renders is kind of from the middle out, and it kind of renders in bands. It sends each one of these bands to your to one of your four cores if you're running a Mac, um, and and it's a you know it just renders differently than uh, Maxwell. Maxwell is going to remember it's the entire image at once, and it kind of gets. Um, more into focus over time this thing kind of renders in lines and so if it's not done it's not done and when it is finished that's all you get um so there's advantages and disadvantages to that but you can see the quality of it's not bad like you get the hard shadows you get a suggestion of the soft shadows and you get like sort of um you know the edges are a little bit like self-shadowed and um kind of softer. So it's not it's not bad. It's certainly sufficient for uh, post rendering. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do with this too. Like when you go into render properties, you can tell it what the um, like what the background is and there's different environments and stuff. You can also just go into a color and you can say like okay I would like to have more of a sky color. And that you can control that um, directly. Um, you can also do things like render the uh, edges and things if you want to. I would use Make 2D if you want edges. Um, you can increase this setting to smooth out the image. You can change the size of the image here. Um, this is high def. A lot of our images will probably be okay at 16 by 12. By default, it's going to use your viewport. Okay, so the, all those settings are controlled here. So I can go ahead and the dots per inch, you know, 72 dpi is fine for a screen. Uh, 100, 125, 150 is good for print. So these are all settings that you can control here. I'm going to keep this as, as simple as I can. Um, so you can see that that automatically changed the, um, the uh, background color. Let's see what we get here. So I didn't, you know, I didn't change anything except for those settings and the rendering properties and the background. And we'll see what uh, what we get. So you, you do notice it's a bit slower. And um, what anti-aliasing means, so aliasing is when there's little pixely edges to things um, that look like stair steps. And you'll see it like a lot in when two objects come together or when you have a curved object, um, that's aliasing. Anti-aliasing is a mathematical um, process that attempts to smooth it out. Um, so it's a it's a method of sampling. It'll also smooth out some of the shadows that you have, so it makes them less like pixelated, like like less kind of dirty and uh, more soft. Um, but as you can see, it dramatically increases the uh, rendering time. The reason why they render from the middle out is because um, a lot of the activity tends to happen in the center of a rendering, and so that's usually the most complicated and longest. Uh, that's the part that takes the longest to render. Um, and that's just a way to kind of speed things up, to kind of do the hard stuff first, and then it does the easy stuff later. Um, you'll notice um, also the reason why it's slower is because I increase the image size, so it makes sense that the more DPI, the larger the image, the longer it's going to take. And 1600 by 1200 is definitely larger than our uh, viewport. Okay, but you can see like. Um, it definitely has improved the quality of, uh, you know, by, by increasing that anti-aliasing, you know, as you kind of zoom in here, you can kind of see the softer. This is definitely, you know, it's fairly aliased. You can see the stair stepping, but when we look at it far enough away, it's not too bad. You can always increase that later or, you know, just kind of ignore it. <laughs> um, there are probably more, there are probably other details that are more important, but that's definitely aliased in there. I, I will tell you, that's what that looks like.
Okay, so we're getting there. I'm not sure, I think it's gonna show the background. That's kind of what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to see if um, we see that blue kind of show up. And actually you might not, yeah we do. You can start to see it show up there. I think the horizon's pretty high in this rendering. Yep, it's definitely there. So you can control that color, and I would do something that's gonna set you up for your post rendering, your, your post processing. Um, give yourself a kind of a good neutral background, you know, like like a desaturated blue, you know, typically works pretty well. Um, but you do definitely wanna differentiate between the horizon and the ground. All right, I'm gonna kill that. So when you're done with the rendering, just go ahead and hit save. And then you can you can tell it what kind of image you want and then save it and that's how you get it out so that's not too bad okay so you're probably saying okay great um but i want materials and i don't have maxwell anymore so how do i do materials well you go into your layers and remember it's good to organize your file by by um by material right when you're at the stage to make it easier to change the materials um, i'm gonna go ahead and close my sun panel i'm just gonna right click and say close so let's do that. So if I go to the glass, you click on, if you um, just do like a click on the material tab, we're going to use um, regular materials. Um, I'm going to call this like my glass. The color is here, and I can I can set I can set the color, yeah, you know, however I want it, and that's what the color is going to be. Transparency is just a slider here. Reflectivity is how much it reflects the background. So I might set that really high, and then the gloss is how shiny it is. You get kind of glossy. So glossy versus kind of more buff. And that is just could just be a very simple uh, glass material. The material that is here, this is just the color of it, like this little chiclet. And you see that when you're in like a shaded view. That doesn't actually mean what it looks like. What what it looks like is what's in the uh, rendered view. And so I made this little glass material. I'm going to go ahead and change my render properties to something faster. Um, just so that we can do this really quickly here. Let's see what the difference is with that material. I hope that's faster. Yeah, as you can see already immediately, the difference it makes when I change that material just to that glass that I made. And that's just a rhino material. It has very basic properties. It's not physically accurate. You are getting some reflections and things though, which is kind of nice. Okay, so there's that material. The other thing would be like what I'm considering my kind of concrete. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna make the base color like a fairly dark gray. Remember, you can always, sunlight's gonna brighten it up. So you kind of want to start with something pretty neutral. Um, you're not gonna play with any of these you know, controls, but we want to give it some some texture, right? So what we can do is we can go into the color uh, tab here and we're not, you could use a texture that you find an image of, similar to what you do in Maxwell. You can also go to these mapping types and these are called like procedural textures. And a procedural texture is something that's uh, mathematically generated. Ooh, and there's like a granite texture. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I'm not gonna do that though. Um, oops, click on this. Um, change the type. I'm going to go back to a, go to a noise texture. So the noise texture is just a, it is mathematically generated. Um, in this case, you choose a couple of different colors. And I'm going to choose a dark gray and like a light gray. And it kind of mixes them together. And there's different types of noise and you can kind of experiment with this, but it's going to mathematically generate some noise. And um, increasing the frequency is going to increase. You can see like the disturbances. And then increasing the amplitude is going to is going to is going to kind of change that. Um, so just kind of play with it, like experiment with that a little bit. The nice thing about procedurally generated textures, so these are textures generated by algorithms. So there's no need for a bitmap uh, because they're just calculated when you need them. They also can tile like an like an infinite distance because again they're mathematically generated. So there won't be any seams in the texture once you actually start to tile it. So we're going to go ahead and make this like noise texture. And I'm going to say okay. And you can kind of see you can kind of see the impact of it here. Um, it doesn't really take into effect until I map it. You'll you'll kind of see it. I did it did kind of affect the uh, thing, but it's not mapped yet. So if you go into the properties, uh, sorry, go to the um, 
Yeah, should be. Oh, I didn't have anything selected. Okay, so if I select everything on this layer, and I go into the properties, and I go texture mapping, and I go to box mapping, and I wouldn't necessarily map everything to the same um, texture coordinates, uh, but but this is kind of a quick way to do it. Each of these objects is a little bit different in shape and a little bit different, you know, in its um, size. And so the mapping, you might want to map things by, you know, walls and then maybe, uh, you know, this wall, maybe these walls, maybe verticals, maybe the roof line. I'm doing this very quick for the demonstration, but, you know, mapping is usually a bit more careful than this. Um, so I did a box map, go bounding box, world, cap it. It's going to crunch for a bit. This is, this might take a little while uh, because again it's mathematically generating the texture, okay. And I don't really see much yet, but if I go into, oops, no 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 no. If I go into this layer and the mapping, I'm going to go ahead and tile this a bunch, and it's kind of probably going to take a little bit to process here. Yeah, you can see it's starting to work. These maps are typically tiled the same in the uh, U and the V, or the X and the Y. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so you can start to see there's texture. Okay. You do see some tiling. Let's take a look at what this looks like, though, as a as a rendering. And this is purely the color of the material. Like it's not actually doing anything that um, is affecting the what looks like the texture, like the kind of bump mapping. We'll talk about that in a second here. But you can see the effect of it. And you can see also why it makes sense to maybe map things a bit more separately. You can see that on these long pieces, the maps are considerably more stretched. And on some of these other ones, they kind of look okay. You know, and that might be like too too much. Like that that might be really uh, harsh in terms of the texture. And so you might want to go back and adjust that material. Go back to the texture. Say, you know what? I want this to be like a lot closer in value to this other thing. And I think that yeah, so we'll do that, and then I would say, like, okay, I think the texture is probably too tiled. Um, let's drop it a lot. Like, you might want it to be a bit more subtle. I do think that when you render it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't tile. It, it might tile in the viewport because it's kind of a preview. Yeah, there you can see kind of, you know, it's got some some difference but it's not as quite as severe it's not a cartoon you know let's see what that looks like i don't know you may decide you like that better or you know not but so that just kind of shows you what the effect of that is. Maybe make it a bit more subtle. The other thing you can do is you could go back to that material and you could say, okay, concrete's not really the color. Um, I'll turn it off and I would go and make a bump map. And a bump map is a kind of map that just shows um, like texture, and only texture, not, not really color. You get any difference in color by the way that light uh, like behaves with it. So if I increase this a bit, and I'm in black and white. I'm just kind of playing with some stuff here. No, I'll do that. Hmm. Okay. Something kind of like that. It depends on the texture you want, but so you look at, it, you can see the effect of it here and how bumpy it is. That's probably too severe. I would knock it down considerably. Um, not sure we can zoom in on that, but you can you can see the difference here. And then if we look at 
No, I didn't see it there. Oh wait, did I just? Ah, I think I, I think I undid all the stuff I did. <laughs> okay, let that be a lesson. Make sure you, make sure you click OK. Okay, so I'll go back again. So I think I had a really high amplitude and a low frequency. I could be, I could be wrong about that. There we go, okay. Just gotta play with this a bit. It's it's more of an art than a science. You're just kind of getting something that you want. Okay, and then we're gonna knock this down like quite a bit. Okay, and so you can kind of see it. And again, this looks like something, but it will not be that severe when you actually render it. Um, we might want to play with the tiling as well. So what bump map does is it just kind of simulates the effect that 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 light has on a material. It's completely fake. Like it's it's not actually the material is not actually doing that, but the light behaves as though it was. And that's not too bad. I still feel like it's a little bit too severe. Um, you can see that that even that 15%, you know, really makes a big difference though in that um, surface texture. Let's check our mapping too. Let's see here. I might I might increase my mapping because I that's not it's a pretty tight pattern, and then I would probably decrease the um, um, intensity a little bit. Let's go back to my layers here. Take it down again. It's you got to be a little bit more subtle. See what that looks like. It kind of depends on your design, you know, how um, how textured the aggregate actually is, or how smooth it is, right? You know, and you gotta be careful because you do it. If you don't do it, if you do it too much, then then the effect isn't really even, isn't really even there. Um, so that may be what I've done here. Maybe I'll split the difference and go ten percent. Anyway, just something. And it, remember, rendering when you're rendering, it's really like iterative. Like you're gonna try something, you're gonna see the results, and then you're gonna try it again, and um, until you kind of narrow it down. But when you're doing something like a concrete, you know, you can pretty much make that, make that material. Um, you can even make a grass material by doing something pretty similar. So we go into the um, color, go to the types, and there's different things, like there's, there is this granite, um, there's tile, stucco, you know, noise. Noise works for a lot of things. Um, wood's kind of strange. Let's see what stucco looks like. Ooh. So if I went in and had like a fairly desaturated, you know, grass, I kind of flip those. Yeah. And play with those percentages. So you can you can see how this kind of increases or decreases them. So these are this is the math that's generating this map here. Ooh, there we go. You don't need to know what these mean. And then I'll say that. You just have to know kind of what the results of them are. I might add a little bit more yellow to this. And again, there's different ways you could do this, but I'm just making make this map. And then what you could do is, um, if you click on the bump map, I think you can click on the noise, the so stucco one. Oh wait a minute, it's not in there. Yeah, what if I can drag? Yeah, drag this in here. Oop. Can I copy it? Undo that. Oh, well, let me do that. Okay, well, 
Let's go back and fix this. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have to do that all over again. Boo. Okay. We'll do it quick. I'm going to call this pretty good. Okay, close. Close enough. Copy this. Paste it into here. Okay, so the reason I did that, though, is because if I go in here and I make these things black and I make these things white, then it works as a bump map for this. The white areas are the parts that stick out and the black areas are the parts that are going to drop back. And so, I mean, if it's not working really well, you can kind of swap them. But um, this will give us texture as well as uh, color. And because it's a copy of it, they're going to match up. So the lighter areas are going to stick out and the darker areas are going to stay, stay back. So that's kind of a nice way to do that. Okay, I did that. And then let me do a planar map on this. And we'll see. Okay, so bounding box, world, UVW. And now you can see it mapping. The map size is huge, so I'm going to reduce it to something like more manageable. And then just tile it a bunch. Oops. This is the kind of thing that you can see it here. I might need a lot more tiles. I don't know. I'm not sure how it's going to work procedurally. Pretty funky looking though. Let's take a look at our grass and see what we got. I could have this. And until you really look at it, you don't know. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. And that's just a simple, you know, again, I, I know it's very similar to the concrete. Let's, let's see what we can do about that. You might think I'm not. I'm being dishonest here. Okay. Let's see what we got. Now, the, you can see the kind of effect of the bump map in the shadow where the light hits it. So that, that's actually present. I mean, that's actually kind of a way that it, that it is um, behaving differently. I'm not seeing a clear result, though, of the map. I don't know if I just made the size too small. Again, kind of an art and not a science. I'm not even actually sure what my units are, and that may be part of the problem. Yeah, so you can see the difference there. Okay, so once you know what that is, you can, it is different than the concrete. You can play with it a little bit. You can you can like tighten it up if you want to, um, or tile it more. It's not just as simple as just kind of applying it and being done. Like you really got to tune it to the um, constraints of the rendering. It's not too bad. Yeah, so now if I look at this, what's that going to do? So, um, you know, as you do this, this is just going to give you some basic kind of tone with texture that you can use to apply the um, post-processing stuff from the video. But it's a little bit easier than working with... Um, with Maxwell for now. And it's just an alternative. And I think it's a good way to think about procedural textures, which we haven't really talked about before. And these have uh, the same, they, they work similarly in Maxwell. Like if you've been paying attention, you know, Maxwell has bump maps, it has like color maps, you know, it has like um, transparency, diffuse maps, and the, the same principles apply here, except again, these are these are generated mathematically. That's not too bad. Well, I would say this. It's a start. Um, I think there's definitely things you can you can do with it, um, but at least it's a place that that you know you're you're working with some texture um, to give it a little bit of variety. So it's not just flat, you know. 
it looks like you can get reflections to work pretty well. So it's a, it's a good place to begin to add texture and entourage and um, different kinds of effects. Um, and you don't need Maxwell, so that's pretty cool. All right, so um, hope that helps. Uh, we'll be around if you have questions. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys uh, on Thursday.